brand new channel focused on cities, art, and people. My name is Jakub, and this is Illustrated City. Every month we'll travel to a new destination and discover it through the eyes of our hosts, an illustrator, painter, graphic designer. We'll visit the workshops, we'll step into a gallery, we'll grab a drink from the favorite cafe. We'll visit must-see locations and really unusual spot. You do not want to miss this and I really don't want you to. So please like, subscribe and hit that notification button. I want this channel to be a place where we can all find recommendations for our creative bucket list. So if you believe that your city should be next, please let me know in the comment below. If you are an artist or you know somebody it should be introduced, in today's episode we go to Newcastle, Australia. See me again at the end of this video where I have a special surprise for you. See you soon. Hey, I'm Ben Mitchell and this is Illustrated City, Newcastle. My name is Ben Mitchell. I'm a freelance illustrator and comic book artist from Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. I've lived here or adjacent to Newcastle all of my life. Newcastle is one of the greatest cities in the world. It's a post-industrial beachside art paradise. Some of my favorite bands, and some of my favorite artists came out of this city and so did I. I feel like there's something new to do every weekend to do with the arts. There'll either be a new exhibition opening, or a band playing a gig, a new play opening at the theatre. There's always something to do. Our biggest cultural exports would have to be the band Silverchair, the movie Bootmen, the Castanet Club, and the 1997 NRL Grand Final, starring uh, Matthew Johns and Andrew Johns. I live in Newcastle West in an apartment building. From our rooftop, you can see the entire city. Actually, let me take you to some of my favorite spots. For breakfast, I usually hit up Chiefly West um, for a bunch of reasons. I've been a part of this business for about four years now, and it's also like across the road from my apartment, so it's very easy for me to um, jump over here. It's next to Newcastle Station. This sign up here is like the first thing that you see when you get off a train coming in from Mayland or from Sydney. I designed all of the graphics. I've been doing their graphics for a long time. I know the whole menu pretty well because I had to draw all of it. There's like a fully illustrated menu printed on the outside. The Chiefly line of businesses started as a cafe stand called Chiefly East, um, where they did either eat in or take away. And now, they sort of like pivoted to an entirely takeaway business. The majority of the customers are people either like coming off of the train or going to work in this giant council building upstairs. They do a really good breakfast menu until 11 a.m. every day. My favorite sandwich is the Tomb Raider, followed closely by the Silver Chair, which is named after a very famous Newcastle band. 
Uh, I also come up with a lot of the names of the sandwiches. That's part of my part of my gig as well. Later Gallery is one of my favorite spots in the West End for art. My friend does all of their graphic design, so I feel like I know about whatever shows they have coming up with independent artists before they happen, so I have plenty of time to get excited for it. They run life drawing classes out of their gallery. It's something that I always do with my friends from work. Uh, we all go and draw together, and it's not always artists. Sometimes they'll be like writers, web developers, you know, software dudes coming in and drawing together. And it's really fun. I hadn't done life drawing since I was like at university before we went there, but uh, it was great. I think when it's your job to draw all day, drawing feels like work when you're just trying to do it for fun. But usually I'm not standing up and I'm not surrounded by friends and I'm not trying to like mirror all of the movements of a naked person while I'm at work. So it's a great way for me to switch off and still get to do something creative. There's a little dog there named Alfie who's always ready to say hello to you. Love it. Love later. I used to live in this house. I don't think it was built to be a residence. And I think there are a lot of people who live in old like shop buildings or factory buildings in Newey and they don't realize that just like little like mining, mining cottages. It's like three doors down from the Cambridge Hotel, which is like one of the biggest music venues in Newcastle. It's a cool place to live. Most of the spots that we're going to today are on the tram line um, between Newcastle Interchange and Newcastle Beach. It works just like trains in Sydney. Like you can just tap on with your Opal card or just use a debit card. I work at a shared studio called The Roost Creative in um, Newcastle Mall. We've been here for a very long time. So I work here um, alongside other like designers, um, software developers, writers, photographers, architects, interior architects. Uh, it makes a lot more sense to me than trying to work in my apartment all day because I have to get up and go to work. But also having people that you work alongside is super important. It's important to be around people. Um, I work from a desk here. I have a bunch of retainer clients who I work with. I work for a coffee roaster, um, a cosmetics company, um, a couple of cafes, a record label in Sydney. Uh, I spent a lot of time drawing, um, a lot of time thinking about drawing, um, a lot of time sort of arguing for my ideas. But I usually work from here. Like I, I work on a computer. I'm trying to get a little bit more mobile. I've been working on an iPad a lot more recently. I have had like a bit of a career in comics um, over the past couple years. Um, it's been a while since I've done um, a fully fledged comic project. Yeah, I do a lot of comics about Newcastle. Either they're fiction comics set in like a small post-industrial beach town or they're like non-fiction comics that are about stuff that's happening in the city. I try to tell stories that only I can tell in my voice. So even though I haven't been working on comics directly. Um, recently, I feel like a lot of the stuff that I do in my commercial work sort of feels like it's telling a story. Any sort of illustration that I get to do, um, if I get to draw like a place with people in it, it's gonna look like Newcastle. It's gonna end up having uh, a place that I know or a person that I know, um, whether I want it to or not. Sometimes it just comes out looking like that. I'll be like, all right, let's draw a, let's draw a train. And then all of a sudden I'll be drawing the interchange or honeysuckle tram stop. Let's draw a barista and I'll be drawing like my friend Elle or the person who made me coffee that morning. We do like community building stuff here at the Roost. We vote for like Rooster of the Year where we have like a big trophy that I designed. Every year I draw another person or someone. 
I got it one month because um, I won a bunch of free gyoza from Susuru, the Japanese restaurant, and I brought them in and shared them with everyone. And uh, everyone voted for me. There's like a picture of myself on the wall holding a big paper bag of dumplings. <laughs> it's there forever now. Last Christmas, we did uh, a secret Santa where no one was allowed to like buy junk. You either had to make something or gift something organic. I got this little Godzilla doll that my friend Dave decorated to look like me. So he's wearing my glasses and he has my mustache and a little hat and a Hawaiian shirt. I love it. Um, I made the, the most recent comic I've ever worked on. It was called Harry Time. It's about a guy who is a landscape architect who um, works across the studio from me that I know very little about. And I made like a whole like 12 page comic about his life. The next comic that I'm gonna be working on, the next non-fiction comic, um, is gonna be about the history of this space. And that's the roost. Yeah, so this is Civic Park. Uh, this is the Olive Tree Markets. This happens once every month. Around about, sometimes they do it every two months. A lot of artists sell their work here. A lot of hospitality businesses set up food trucks and stalls and stuff. It's a wonderful place to go. The vegan Venezuelan food truck, Kamachi Kitchen, is another business I've done illustrations for. So I drew these little characters for them. They go to Capybara with the maracas. They got this guy who's like a, from a traditional Venezuelan festival. And then we got this cool mushroom gal. You want to add iced coffee? This is like serious delirium of the best cold brew you can get. Probably the best part about the markets. Museum Park has become skating spot in Newcastle. It was a big deal for the local council to embrace skaters rather than trying to kick them out. They like removed the skate stoppers from a bunch of these ledges here uh, so that people can skate on them. Man, he's great. Whoever that is, whoever that is. So this was like the feature wall of the Big Picture Fest in 2020 art festival in Newcastle where they fly in artists um, from around the world and around Australia to come and do walls. This was painted by Fintan McGee with help from Bronte Nalo, who was a local artist. This is Trevor Dickinson. Uh, he is an artist who traveled here from the UK, originally working in graphic design and then it became his niche to really like celebrate Newcastle. It's as big as like Los Angeles or New York. As an outsider, he loves all of the like quirkiness of the city. He's done a bunch of these photo op murals around town where you're supposed to like get down and interact with it. So a lot of people go and get their photo taken pretending that they're holding this dinosaur or pretending that they're like the Lord Mayor of Newcastle. He's done this one that's part of Cartoon Corridor. And he's done a, a couple other ones around the museum as well. This is Sophia Flegg. She's one of my favorite painters in Newcastle. She's so bright. Uh, with the colors that she uses. And I don't get to see her do very many murals, so I was stoked when she was asked to be a part of this. It's one of my favorite pieces up in town that's done by a local artist. There she is. I'm Becky. I am a tour guide and creative producer in 
Newcastle. I work with Ben in The Roost, which is a really interesting creative space. I run Newcastle Afoot. Newcastle Afoot is a local experiences walking to a business. We do all sorts of different types of guided activities where we take people through laneways and along the beach and all these different scenes with it within the Newcastle area. So this is like a tag wall that went up um, for the Big Picture Fest this year. It's called Spray Alley. It's made in tribute to like a pretty big graphic artist in the city named Dooza. There are a whole bunch of local artists doing his tag rather than their own tag over here. Unfortunately, he died of a heart attack earlier this year. This whole part of the alley is in tribute to him. This was like a big deal for spray culture because it's the first thing that you would see if you were coming in on the old rail corridor. You would see this alley first. Uh, so my favorite store in Newcastle would have to be Late Store on Hunter Street. It's run by Laura and Adam, two like local skaters. A lot of my favorite clothing brands that I wear like every day I discovered through Late. Candace and Crawling Death and The Snake Hole. I really like supporting local businesses. So if I'm gonna be buying clothes, I like doing it through them. I love shopping Australian, both Australian companies from Australian stores. Adam runs a wheel company called Arrow Wheels. I think like a big part of why I got into skating was because I wanted to support the store. <laughs> I wanted to like make a skate setup made of local companies. So my wheels are from him. This is another piece from the Big Picture Fest in 2020. Bronte Naylor did this one. It's like a picture of the beach without the beach in it. Picture of the beach goers. One of the only times you'll see a picture of the beach in Newcastle without the ocean in it. I think the best thing about the university building is that it has so many windows. So you get to see these murals from all of these different angles. Like I'd, I've never been in a class that was in this building, but I don't think I would get very much work done if I was looking at the art all the time. But it's cool seeing all of this being reflected in the different windows. This on the other side of the university building is a painting by Anari, who's another local artist. I love this. I feel like I, every time I'm like walking into work, it's one of the first things that I see. It's so tall. It's one of the tallest murals in the city. All right, so we're on Auckland Street now. This is my favorite of all of the new murals that went up as part of the Big Picture Festival this year. This is a painting by Claire Foxton, who is from Sydney. It was made in collaboration with two Newcastle artists. I love those sunglasses. I feel like the, the translucent sunglasses are one of my favorite things that's on a wall in the city. Press Bookhouse on Hunter Street is my favorite cafe to go on a Sunday because um, they're open on a Sunday. There are like a secondhand bookstore and coffee shop. A long time ago, I did all of their graphics um, and some of them are still left over. Alleyway next to the Star Hotel was used this thing called Little Festival earlier on this year where there are a bunch of small impermanent artworks that were all just like jammed into this one alleyway. Come look at this, the little Buddha, but it's a stormtrooper. Coffee. We're in Islington right now at Suspension. 
Uh, everyone just calls it Spanos. They're like a Newcastle institution in that they roast their own beans and it's a dark roast. So it's, if you like black coffee, this is a good spot for it. They're open on a Sunday. A lot of cafes in Newcastle are closed on Sundays. So usually I will be traveling east towards the beach if I'm looking for coffee. But on a Sunday, I start going in the opposite direction. So I go to Islington. Islington used to be like the butt of a lot of jokes in Newcastle. Like people would talk about it like it was a sketchy area 10 years ago. And now it's one of the nicest spots in the city both to live and to go and get food. There's plenty of beautiful restaurants here. So these cinnamon scrolls, they're made by My Family Baker. It's the name of the business. Um, it used to be run by a guy named Tony. Um, he used to like deliver these to me at 6 a.m. every morning because I did his old logo back when I lived in that old house. When I did the book launch for this book, I hired him to make as many cinnamon scrolls as he could to cater the event for like $100. And um, he was like, I can, but like I'll make them half the size. And he made like 50 of them. And they used to be double this size. After I did that event, they started making them smaller. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's my fault, but it could be. That's why we have manageable sized cinnamon rolls in Newcastle now. High Swan Dive is like a store and plant nursery in the middle of Islington. They used to be like a small shop in Newcastle East where they would sell beautiful books and ceramics. When they had the ceramics on display, they would put plants in them and everyone wanted to buy the plants. So eventually they like expanded into this beautiful greenhouse in Islington. Basically every plant that I own, I have bought from here uh, and I've tried to keep it alive as best I can. A beautiful place to hang out and also a beautiful store. Great place to get a gift. Great place to look at some greenery. They open at 9 a.m. on a Sunday. So I don't show up at eight. Even though it is like a beautiful store where you can get like some ceramics or like a cool knife or a book about pickles. It's a Sunday, you just had a coffee and you're with your friend. High Swan Dive is my favorite place to chill out in Newcastle. Lodge. I like to head into chiefly to Gallo. It's a Mexican restaurant, a taqueria on 177 King Street in Newcastle East. Formerly chiefly East. It's run by uh, my friend Ali Downer's family. They moved here from Scotland in 2017 and eventually just wanted to take over the whole hospitality industry in Newcastle. So this is now the place to go if you want to get a taco in, uh, in Newcastle. I did all the artwork. I've been doing artwork for these people for a very long time, where it started out like I was just coming here as like a fan of the sandwiches, and now it's a very big part of my life, and I'm a very big part of the company. They really just give me free reign to make it look however I want it to look. Like it sort of feels more like I'm doing an art project when I'm working here, rather than having a job. Hey, it's Ali. I wanted to touch on my relationship with Ben. When he first started coming here as a customer, we just struck up a good friendship and then started doing artwork for Chiefly Sandwiches before we opened the shop up at West. And then people really seemed to relate to his artwork and the creativity that he brought to the business, which is hard to kind of demonstrate just through the food. So I think the relationship between us has been really good for building the new restaurant as well with the guy. And yeah, people just seem to really enjoy the merchandise. Everything that he brings to the table, so it could all get on back. During the first COVID lockdown, uh, they converted this spot into like a little neighborhood grocer uh, where they were just selling the food that they would get from their like wholesale hospitality hookups, just to normal people who were sort of too afraid to go to big chain grocery stores. And I made a little comic about it for um, a COVID comics anthology run by uh, Graphic Mundi, who are based in New York. And uh, now it's printed real big and is on the wall here. It's one of my favorite comics I've ever done. I feel like um, this is a story that really could have only been told by me because uh, it was about my friends. It was about the places that I go every day. And I wrote the whole thing based off 
based on like conversations that I'd had with people who work here. It's um, great to be able to come in here and see one of my comics this big um, every day when I'm here. Look at customers reading it. Also, it has a swear word in it, which is um, pretty, pretty good. Um, that they let me put that on the wall. This here is like one of my favorite pages of comics I've ever done. Uh, something that I try to do when I'm doing comics is think about the composition of each panel and then the composition of the page as a whole. I think this like sums it up how everything is pointing towards the middle in these four panels. They each work on their own, but they work as like a part of a greater whole. There's plenty of pubs and clubs and little bars all over Newcastle, but I'm not like a big drinker. So I'd say that my favorite bar is Jams. It's a Japanese style karaoke bar. They serve a lot of weird Japanese beers there, including 0%, <laughs> uh, which is great for me. Japanese snacks, it's great to get edamame or takoyaki there, but also like it's a karaoke bar. They do live band karaoke pretty regularly, but I've been to so many parties there where we've ended up singing until I lose my voice all night in a little booth. Coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. Got it, got it, be down because I want it all. Yeah, I really like karaoke. <laughs> like, I like karaoke arguably too much. Jams is weird and fun and cute in a way that a lot of bars in Newcastle don't get to be. The vibes are immaculate and I love doing karaoke. My favorite local gallery is The Lockup. Originally like a police station from the 1800s. It's been repurposed as an art gallery. It's pretty emblematic of the art scene in Newcastle. A lot of the exhibitions that I've seen have been in cafes and stores, people's houses, <laughs> not necessarily in galleries. So to have, to repurpose essentially like a jail to display art is very cool. It has a very different vibe to any of the other galleries in town. I was at an opening in 2014. Something happened, I slipped, dislocated my knee, and I was like talking to a doctor about it, trying to work out what went wrong. And they were like, oh yeah, I think you just like passed out momentarily from the pain of your knee and that's why you slipped. And I was like, but the pain was because I slipped. So I'm not saying it was a ghost of a prisoner from the 1800s, but I'm not saying that it wasn't. So I'm not ruling it out. Favorite city. I feel like I always gravitate towards not the major city in a country. I've been to London, but I've also been to Leeds and I liked Leeds better. I've, I've never been to America. I would love to go to Detroit. It's not Los Angeles, it's not New York. I've heard that it's similar to Newcastle. Very post-industrial and there's a lot of art there. Would love, love to visit. So that was Newcastle, the greatest city in the world. 
Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're ever in the country, if you're ever in the city, if you're ever in the state, get on down to Newcastle and look me up. We can go get lunch. I'm, I'm around. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the first episode. Together with Ben Mitchell, we have prepared something special for free first viewers to get to this location. If you live in Newcastle, run for it. If you can make it, you can always visit our website where we have some cool stuff in our online shop. You can find more behind the scenes videos, extra photos on our Instagram and our website. And if you're wondering what's next, here's a small hint. If you recognize the location, please let me know in the comment. Thanks for today. See you next time.